the best in this sport. Whether you like it or not, learn to love it because it's the best thing going today. Hello, hello. All right, look, we got Khaled in here with us. Hello, okay, no, Sean. I'm Blaine Gilmer. <laughs> Welcome to Georgia Player Section on UGA Sports. Guys, I missed the week. I had a little vacation. We all had all, all that stuff going on. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Can we get a can we get a go dogs right here, Papa? Right here? Say go dogs. Go dogs. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's go dogs and he's, are you gonna say go Spider Man too? Callum's a big Spider Man guy. You gonna hit us, you gonna hit us with the Spidey too? You gonna hit him with the Spidey? Show us the web. There Dang. we go. That's it, all right there. Right. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks for bringing me my beverage. You Dude. cannot play Spider-Man right now. We'll play it later. I love you. Do. <laughs> I love you. Cheers to Spider-Man. Later. Cheers to another show of Cheers. Georgia Players Section on UGASports.com. I appreciate everybody joining in. Go ahead and hit that like button right off the top. Helps us out here. Get more people in here. Share with your friends. Be a friend. Tell a friend as we get going here. We got a lot going on mailbag we got some mailbag questions that we're going to throw out there to you guys um quarterback rankings and then we got to touch on uh the ajc and uga stuff which actually we have a mailbag question about that so it'll kind of just flow into part of that so a lot going on uh guys a lot going on how was the fourth of july y'all y'all do it up big blow anything up on the fourth of july i got them all we good Got all, <laughs> got, got all the fingers, you know what I'm saying? So we straight. Um, but no, nah, man, just had 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 the fam over today. Um, had the rib wings. I mean, that's why I call uh, I called you. I called you earlier. The rib wings. Uh, here we go. Uh, had the rib wings, you know. So yeah, it's just a good 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 little good little family time. It's always good, you know, to enjoy the fam. So Shout no Sean, where'd y'all watch y'all watch fireworks out there? What'd you what'd you get going? Yeah, no, nah, you know, I had some people over as well, man. Uh, I had a good time. We just, you know, we cooked it up a little bit and then um, grilled it up. And then, uh, yeah, we, we set off some fireworks at the house, you know what I mean? And I'm just a little upset because I felt like me and the neighbors were, were kind of going back and forth. Oh, y'all was? I, yeah, I had started one. Bah, 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 and then, you know, two seconds later, I hit, bah, 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 bah. Oh, y'all want to go just back gave and forth. It. So, we, so we did that for like 10 minutes, back and forth. Hit the fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I underestimated. I thought I had enough. Oh, he and, got you. Uh, you know what? It was the longevity in the fireworks. They, <laughs> they, they kept on going. And I was like, you know what? All right, y'all got this year. And next year, I'm spending like three G's on just fireworks. And I'm going to be out there all night. Bah, 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 bah. They ain't going to be mad. You ain't going to bring it into July 5th. Nah, nah, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real set. I'm gonna keep it all in July 4th. But well, we're gonna go non stop for about like 15 minutes. Duh. Absolutely, you got the the key is to have all them things lined up, have them tubes, and uh, have multiple guys lighting them. Get, yep. get going. We used to do a big fireworks show back here behind the house. We stopped that when uh, one went off a little bit too low, and it fell into the tote of all the other fireworks that we had, and exploded. Every every people were jumping into the pond, everything, just trying to get out of the way. One dude took one right in the back. I mean, it was a it was a crazy deal. So we've we've kind of laid low here for a few years after that happened. But uh, but no, it's a lot of fun. We hope everybody had a, a great Fourth of July long weekend. It's always I mean, when it goes on a Tuesday and you maybe you get off work on Monday, you know that's that's a that's a good little deal there. So appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, like I said, Tavares King, No Sean Marino, former Georgia Bulldogs, great. NFL athletes as well, and now they join me each and every week to talk here on Georgia football, SEC football, and lots more. Guys, uh, we are going to be touching on the, these mailbag questions, and I just hope y'all are, y'all are buckled up and ready to go. I, I don't know if I'm going to get them on the like get them on the screen like I've uh, done in the past, but I'll definitely, uh, definitely, you know. Read them out and tell me, tell people who they're from. If you're not on the vault with us on the vent, you need to be because that's where a lot of these questions came from. But guys, before before we get into that, uh, you know, it's always fun to start the the countdown to the to the season. And w- the way that we do that around here is we start ranking positions. And you know, when we start ranking positions, Uh-oh. it gets a little bit 
little bit serious. No, Sean, we hadn't even revealed uh, these yet, and we will in just a minute. But just judging <laughs> off of our list comparison in our group text there, I feel like you're going to be writing a lot of things down tonight. I feel like the list is going to going to grow a little bit, your your list of what things you have written down. What you mean by that? No, you like to you like to write down and hold people accountable. I think. <laughs> oh, oh, you talking about the pato chato? Okay. A little bit on some stuff. Oh, oh, yeah, I can see that. Especially yeah, when I looked at your list, I was like, okay, I understand, but I'm in a totally different direction than you. You know what I'm saying? It, it seems, but yeah. no, um, we're gonna see. It, it, you might be right. I'm gonna be opening up that book a lot tonight. We're gonna see. Especially with you, buddy. I watch you, bro. I, TK, oh my TK, what do you think, I man? I just we, looked at, yo, you know, it's crazy. You know, we got our thread. I just, I'm just now looking at your list, Blaine. Yeah. And there's some eyebrow razors on there. I think I might have to get me a little pin, too. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, we'll okay. see. We'll see. It's okay. going to be. It's going to be interesting as we reveal these, and uh, production is uh, is even doing some work as we speak, trying to get the uh, shout out production graphic right. Yeah, hey, shout production. out to production. Hey, shout they're, out production. You know, they're working hard. They're working hard. So, let without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and get into a couple of these these mailbag questions. And uh, speaking of production, we got a little got a little intro for the mailbag. Hey, I like that. I like that. Yeah, I'm with that. That's <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. Got a, little, got, a little, got a little guitar strum to it there. Yeah. You, you know, something, something a little light. All right. So our man Alex Page, uh, I put out a tweet, and he was the first one that responded to. It. He sent me a DM, did it all class like, and he said, he said, "Hey, ask TK and No Sean." Uh, and he wanted to know my thoughts right, as right. well about the, the AJC article, uh, um, several articles now. Uh, thoughts on not only the article itself, the one that they wrote about Georgia rallying around uh, guys accused of sexual abuse and things like that, and they've written about the problem with the speeding and, and all this kind of stuff. But he wants to know your thoughts on it, and also um, he said – you know what coaches were told told them when they were you know host when you guys were hosted by recruits and and the program and things like that and and then also when your time there with you know coach Rick people getting DUIs and how was all that kind of stuff like handled around the team you don't have to name any names but when stuff like that went down so just kind of share your overall thoughts on this whole situation AJC Georgia and then your experience um, at, in Athens as well with that kind of stuff. Um, man, I mean, obviously reading the articles, you kind of, it, it's, it's a little, uh, it's a little just crazy to me that it's almost like they're poking and prodding and trying to find, you know, things to kind of come at Georgia for, or come at Kirby for, um, when, if you look around, uh, the country, you know, those things are going on at a lot of places. You got young kids that are making mistakes, um, you know, in in their lives. But but um, so it, it, from an AJC standpoint, I think Jermaine wrote it up here. We don't – I feel like it does feel like the AJC is Georgia's biggest rival right now because everything that's being written is, you know, negative or, or trying to, or trying to uh, dim a light. Um that Georgia yeah. has right now. So uh very, 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 very tough uh to to read uh some of that stuff and how it reads because it's it's in my in my opinion, it's not um it's not news. Uh yeah. it, it isn't news, it's not reporting. I don't I don't feel like I think it's kind of going uh, after people a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So so I, I I I don't like it um, to to say the the least. I guess I I won't get on a soapbox about it, but um I I definitely am not a fan of uh, the AJC right now. No no Sean yeah. no Sean kind of talk from a player perspective at Georgia like you know when you guys would either be on maybe it was even visiting 
or maybe you were, um, you know, out with friends and stuff like that. How did the coaches, when you were at Georgia, like kind of coach y'all off the field, say, hey, guys, be aware of this. Think about that. Like, was was that kind of stuff going on when you were at Georgia in terms of trying to educate you guys on, okay, here's what you need to look out for? Of course. They're always in your corner, you know what I mean? Um, they're like a extension of your family, you're like a father figure to, to a lot of guys, you know what I mean? So they're always in your corner and making sure you do the right thing, make sure you, you are where you're supposed to be. Um, and the same in um, – at least amount of trouble as possible, you know? Um, but things are gonna happen. Um, but at the same time, I feel like, you know, you always gonna have people talking, especially, I mean, and we weren't as good as the Georgia teams now, you know what I mean? Three years in a row, uh, two years in a row, going on three maybe, um, with great seasons. So people were always gonna attack you, you know what I mean? But um, I feel like same thing with what TK was saying, alluded to, um, it's not news, but at the same time, um, it feels like they are just just hating, like just picking on them, just trying to get things pulled out um, from from the program that makes them look bad. Even Kirby Smart, even Ray Gant. I mean, you know, Gant. All all a lot of people. Gant, um, yeah. You know, Brooks is just making a lot of people look kind of bad. Um, but at the same time, I mean, you got to handle stuff internally as as a team. Um, and at the same time, you know, let the legal stuff handle itself as well. So, you know, you can't mix the two a lot of the times. Um, I think I think where it gets a little bit, you know, I can see they just see having to cover it a little bit because let's let's face it, Kirby Smart is the highest paid employee in the state of Georgia. He's a Georgia, mm -hmm. you know, paid employee. So he kind of runs this organization. So I see where they have to kind of cover it, and especially everything got magnified with the unfortunate loss of life earlier this year, you know, with Devin Willock and stuff like that. So that's when people really started looking into stuff. And yes, Georgia has a deal where there's been guys driving too fast and they need to, they need to figure that out. They need to stop it. Right. They need to, they need to get, get that taken care of because there's too many cases of that and it's just dangerous for them and everybody. But I think it's the wording of these headlines almost coming out here and creating an adversarial deal of AJC versus UGA instead of just stating, hey, here's what's happened yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. It's saying, hey, here's what's happened. And he, and basically they're going even further and saying, and, and here's our two cents of, of why it's happening and pointing fingers at, yeah. who, at who the blame belongs on. That's That's my opinion of it. I mean, guys, you know as well as I do, Coach Rick couldn't have been with you guys 24-7. You had to you had to go out and and handle yourself like like men and make make the right decisions. And there's some guys on Georgia's team that have failed to do that here recently, and they need to be held accountable. But as you said, no, Sean, I think that's you know a lot of people don't like hearing internal discipline. But I mean, what are you guys' thoughts? Is it? I mean, See, at a certain point, people have to take accountability of their actions. Of course, you got to take accountability. I mean. You're a young man learning and growing, right? And you're going to make mistakes. It is what it is. Um, but you got to learn from those mistakes and grow from that. Um, it's all about growth. And like what you said about the articles, man, I feel like it's, uh, <laughs> it's the remarks that they're making, too. And like the slander on people's names that I'm like, why are they talking about this like this? You know, um, that I didn't really like from the articles. But like what you said, they do have to report um, the news and what's going on. But it's a way to do it. You know, when you don't have to tear people down. Right. TK, can can you kind of talk to us about your experience when Coach Rick was there? If if anybody got in trouble, or or if maybe maybe one of you guys, you don't have to say what, but if you guys ever you know stepped yeah. out of line, how did they how did they handle that situation? Like what was done about it? Yeah, I mean, no shine alluded to to everything being internal. I was a guy that I mean, I I went out one time. I think I was nineteen got arrested, an MIP, minor in possession of uh, alcohol. Um, and it was handled internally. Um, but, and, and, and like I'm sure all of these instances are being handled internally. I'm certain they are. But within that, within that uh, figurative spanking I got from Coach Rick and, and, and every, and, and just, you know my teammates everybody because it is a family how much, how much do you run how much do you run boy 
<laughs> yeah, I was what morning runs. I had like yeah, I had morning runs for like a month. I think it was crazy. Um, <clears throat> rolling the field, yeah, it was nuts. But Bobo within, made you roll, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was crazy. But within that, within that, bro, honestly, you you do. Those men love you so much, bro. They want you to be a man. They want you to to be a to grow into a person. So within my downfall there, within that, I grew so much, bro, because of because of Coach Rick, because of Bobo, because of Coach Ball. I had because of John Eason talking with those guys. Like you grow through those things and, and you build so much character through things like that internally, like no Sean is saying, like no Sean was saying, all that's handled internally, yes, but those men are as no Sean said, they love you, bro. They're your they're your father figures. They want you to be a good man. They want you to be a good person. They want you to be a good dad, husband, all of that. All of that. So within those downfalls that these these kids may be going through, there's so much growth being taken that's taking place behind the scenes that the AJC that the average fan does not see right. does not see you know what I'm saying Tim, so right. um like so Tim for them to, to write things like that is just crazy Tim right. Collins said, <laughs> I didn't learn the speed limit until I had to pay my own car insurance he goes that slowed him down for sure now that is something too that you got to take into account a lot of these guys a lot of people that are in the AJC camp of this thing they're saying well hey a lot of these guys are getting these cars because they're getting NIL and all this kind of stuff, and and they're just going wild and all this. And hey, there may be an element to that, right? You get new found you know, a new toy, go out there to play with it. But people got to realize there's there's two sides to this. People have to hold themselves accountable, like we've said, and you have to realize you're ha- when you drive a vehicle, you have your life and the life of the other people on the road in your hands. You have yeah, that 100%. responsibility, so you got to take care of that. But then also too, I just no Sean. I just think if uh, if the AJC maybe toned down the rhetoric of this and and was more like, hey, how can Georgia go about fixing this problem instead of Georgia has a problem, somebody needs to be held, you know, all this kind of right. stuff and more of that that tone. I think it'd be a little bit different. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and it's a lot of things that come to effect with all the stuff that has been going on. Um, and like you said, it's just so much you can do. You know what I mean? How much can you really do? Um, it does come down to um, the individual person and, and taking the responsibility for their actions. You know what I mean? There's not much you can do. Yeah, you could run for a whole year. That's not going to change your actions. You got to learn from those mistakes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What do we do? Take money from the guys now because of the NIL? Maybe that's something they do in the future. I don't know. But at the same time, it's just a learning process that uh, guys got to go through. And at the same time, with, with, you know, with all the success, um comes great responsibility and we're seeing that you know what i mean we're playing really well and guys you know we loving it and guys are going to have trying to have a good time so um as long as they're you know staying on those guys on, on on the right side of things and um giving these guys guidance as much as possible that's all you can really ask for yeah and I, that that's on the speeding stuff and then on the on the part about the the abuse and rallying around people of abuse and things like that i think what happened there is they just listen. I don't think any of us. We all have children. I don't think any of us would want our kids in that situation that 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 young man and that young woman found themselves in. You you try to you try to uh, get your kids to av- avoid that kind of stuff, but at the same time, I think a narrative was painted without all the the facts being laid out there, and then all of a sudden, it's like nobody mentions that hey it was looked into by authorities and all the charges ended up being dropped. So now you're bringing this up after the fact, you know, and, and trying to re trying to trying to t- bring it up in the, in the court of public opinion is, is basically what they were trying to do. It, in my opinion. Yeah. And at the same time, I mean, especially if those things were resolved and, you know, already in the past, you know, I mean, I think about, you know, just opening up weird wounds and just, just everyone that's involved, you know what I mean? Like, just don't bring up old stuff like that. But it, it, it just comes with the territory, though, of being successful and um, and being as good as Georgia is right now. That they're gonna take every poke at you, every jab at you that they can, um, whether that's in the past or with it or in the future. You know what I mean? So 
Um, those are the things that's gonna gonna come, and it comes with the territory. TK has this. In your opinion, and we're going to get into as we go throughout the the season, preparing for the SEC season and stuff like that. People are going to say, you know, a lot of people are going to come out and say, "Well, is Georgia motivated after winning back to back national championships and stuff like this?" Hmm. I think this gives Kirby Smart something to point to because hey, they don't only doubt you as you know football players, guys replacing. They doubt you as men and your culture mm-hmm. and what we stand for and all this kind of. Is that you think that could be a rallying cry this year for this Georgia team? Listen, Blaine, you you just said it. I mean, if if obviously we know Kirk, Kirby uses any any and everything that he can to to rally his guys, but like, yeah, bro, anybody taking a jab at your character, um, it, it I mean, it stings. As a man, it stings. Um, so so I I I, I can assure that that. If, if, if I, that this is a topic of discussion in in meetings every meeting room for sure um is 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 about something something along those lines that you just said they're 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 testing your they doubt your character they doubt you doubt you as as man show them who you are so so for sure man I, um man yeah i mean i mean yeah it brought me the wrong way down just as a as a as a as a dog so yeah I'm, yeah. Yeah, well, it's there's there's a lot of nuances to this, and there's a lot of things we we do want to make clear. We're not saying that the Georgia football team is perfect and that they no. don't make mistakes because they absolutely do. And guys, I'm I'm of the opinion that if somebody does something like a DUI. I would I would be in favor of a zero tolerance policy for DUI. Like you get a DUI, you get kicked off the team because like that is literally you're taking your life and somebody else's life into that's bigger than football in my opinion. But something like speeding or something you know of a of a smaller thing, I mean I, that, level, that, though, that but... could be that could be debatable. You know, like even yeah, on that. Yeah. But what I'm saying is I'm fine for stiff stiff penalties on guys, but this whole media trying to really go after the program uh in a way that is obviously seems very biased uh is crazy to me right and like i said and i'm for the news i'm for the tell me what's going on yeah i need to know i appreciate hearing you know seeing what was on there but as i was reading you know through all the articles man i'm just like okay all right that happened all right i'm reading through but then i'm like why, why, why that comment why are you making that comment about that person or about you know about the uh just different player just different people you know what i mean in the articles i'm like you, you didn't have to really go that far tell me tell me the facts tell me what's going on and leave it at that absolutely well we gotta we gotta get some more of these mailbag questions i'm gonna throw this one up there rome georgia dog says in your opinion what is one thing that kirby has done for the program to elevate it past where the other coaches have um, so let's answer that one first. What's one thing in your guys' opinion you think Kirby's done that's made the difference between where it was under Coach Rick and and you know Coach Don and guys like that and now him? Hmm. Man, it's gonna sound crazy, but finish the drill. Um serious. Um, you know, we were always we always had Coach Rick and staff recruited recruited amazingly. Um, we always had dogs on the team, guys that were just you were just just freaks. Um, but like we were always just like right there, you know what I'm saying? So I, I definitely would just say that the thing that Kirby has done better is finish the drill. Like he's he's whatever magic sauce he got these boys uh, drinking, they need to keep drinking because they're doing their thing when it comes to big games, big moments. Um, they're doing their thing, so I, that's that's probably um, the the one thing I would say. And then I guess what what could he improve on? Damn, you boys. I mean, <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe getting I, guys not to drive so fast. Yeah, <laughs> so, they, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, so. No, Sean. What what's your, what's your what's your reason why you think that the Jeez. the program's improved under Kirby? Dang, a couple things came to my mind when you when that question came about. I mean. Something or similar on the lines of what you were saying, TK, is that mentality, that dog mentality. Hey, bro, we ain't gonna get beat, and we are the team to be beat, and we got it us to go get the the chip. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that just that mentality. It was the first thing that jumped to my mind. Um, secondly, was okay. 
that staff that he was able to put together as well. I mean, we had some good coaches, but putting them all together underneath one roof, I think it's amazing um, job that Kirby has look what, done. So, look so what far. Alex Page did. That ain't got um, nothing to do with Kirby. The sell the upgrades. Um, I mean, it does have something to do with Kirby. I mean, that could have came. Uh, and then the third thing, though, was, was maybe definitely. something along those lines, um, Paige, was more so is um, getting former Bulldogs and, and former guys back into that stadium, man. When it would, when we played for, uh, for for Rick, I mean, you know, TD didn't come back, you know what I mean, and, and, and see us and be on the sideline and cheering us on, you know what I mean? I love that he brought that, um, the highlight back to being – like look at all the people that we produce here at Georgia. Right. You know what I mean? And, and and we're all dogs. And you can get to that level and get to the league if you want to. Let's go out here and prove it. You know, I love that he brought that to the table as well. So yeah, those I, are I, a couple I, of things that came to mind. Well, no, those are great points. That's what it is. Those are those are great points. And the other thing, you know, TK, you were you're right in the saying that you guys had great players on your roster, mm -hmm. but I think that Kirby Smart has taken the recruiting to an entire another level in terms of like your guys, like you, you had, you had a certain number of elite players on your team. Now I think that number of elite players has grown in yeah. the, uh, you know, across the board. Like he's, he's recruiting at a level that Georgia never saw before. Um, so I think it's all about, you know, roster management and all that kind of stuff. It factors into it too. So great question from a uh, Rome, Georgia dog there, big fatty 94. Who will be the top five players for Georgia at season's end? So if you had to say the top five guys, yeah. most important guys, let's say, by the by the season's end, who who are you going with? Ooh. Give me obviously Brock Bowers. Oh yeah. Uh, give me um listen, this is a guy I think is gonna step up. Kamari Lasseter. I yeah. think it's, I think that's gonna be a big one for us. Um give me I think Carson. It's gonna to have to be big. Um, give me Lad McConkey, and give me. Let's you gotta go. show some fat boy. Love. You gotta show one of them big boys. Yeah, love, no, man. I know. I was thinking. I was thinking um, man, I'm going defense. Uh, what's my man? Give me 13 off the edge. Mike Michael Williams. Yes, sir. I can see that. Any any of those you disagree with, No Sean, or any that you need to add to it? Mm, no, I like the receivers. He, and of course, you got throw Bowers in there. Um, they got you got the big boy. No, I can't disagree. You know, you might have to do another I like, receiver I like in SVP there too, Andy. I like SVP too. Yeah, SVP he is a receiver in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. SVP's F, SVP's great. I think. Um, I think when it comes down to it, Brock Bowers. Obviously, all of us yeah. had that one. Um, Carson Beck, if, if Georgia is going to be successful, Carson Beck, right. who we all believe is going to be the guy, like you said, is going to have to have a great year. Yeah, I need a, I need a linebacker, man. Someone throw me a linebacker in there. I was thinking, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to put out, uh, I'm going to put out oh, a guy, yeah. I'm going to put out a guy out there that, you know, kind of got overshadowed a little bit at times by Jamon Dumas Johnson, but Smile okay. Munden, okay. I think Smile Munden is a guy who he's not, he probably won't be healthy for the first couple of games, but Georgia doesn't really need him for the first couple of games. Um, so I think by the time he gets in there, I think he could really work himself into being a, he's just such a freak athlete that I really think he could work himself into being a late first round draft pick type guy. Oh, wow. Like that's how, that, that's how good he is. Um, and then you're talking yeah, about dom dominant. He tried to say it real fast and get through it. But okay. You see it? Dominant Love It. Dominant Love It. Yeah, you uh, right there for sure. Dominant Love It is gonna get a lot of catches. A lot of yeah, catches. hundred percent. Um he's gonna be a, he's gonna be a dude. And then by the end of it, I think everybody's gonna know Ernest Green's name at left tackle. I think being a being a guy first year left tackle, he's gonna come in and I think he's gonna solidify that spot and and just keep going right on. So those would be my guys. Uh, Michael Williams, of course, is, is in there. So it's hard to it, – that's the thing. It's hard to narrow it down to five. It is. It is hard It is hard to narrow it down to five, especially when you're yeah. talking about um, the D-line. But, but yeah, yeah D-line. Uh, Jamon Dumas. John, yeah, yeah. Jamon, Jamon Dumas Johnson is, is – is, you know, he had a fantastic year yeah. last year. Uh, I mean, Marvin Jones Jr. could do big things. There's lots of guys but, that are out there. But I, I, I need we somebody. We didn't even mention I need, Javon Bullard. I need – listen, 
I should have said him, but I, I really want to see Kamari Lasseter step up and be mm-hmm. the be the guy. But bro, who do who do y'all think on offense? This is just off topic. Who do y'all think on offense needs to step up? Like just off the rip. The guy that we went over this, I thought. Yeah, we we kind of went over this a couple couple weeks ago. I know. I said uh, Milton. I saw yeah, he right said. There. He said Milton. I said Ernest Green because I think, you know, I mean, left tackle is a huge position. You were picking a receiver. I think you picked who, – who'd you pick? Ra-Ra? Ra-Ra Thomas is who you picked, TK? Yeah, I mean, that's who we want to see step up. I'm saying who need like, – like, like, who, who, need who needs to take it to that next level? Yeah, hell yeah. Deal? Like – I'm staying on mine. I'm saying, I'm saying somebody in the backfield. We just need to I – need, I need to see another Marino. Is that, that's what I – Exactly. You ain't gonna see another Marino for a while. They guys don't. Guys don't. They, they don't. They don't make. They don't make them like that, huh? They don't use their heads like battering rams like that oh, man, man used to anymore. He, he's uh, over there taking it to the dudes. Loved it. You're right. <laughs> but, 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 but I'm serious. Like the backfield for me, bro. I got. I, yeah. I, I need. I need it. Sauce. You might. And we got another backs in that backfield. You know what I mean? It, it, it's gonna be interesting how they can use. See how they're gonna use all these guys. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, well, they got to be healthy first, and we know that that yeah, Milton's had his right. problems staying healthy. Branson Robinson's probably gonna miss a couple games early mm-hmm. with that foot. I mean, so so we'll and see. I love Kendall you, Milton, guys. I love yeah, yeah. for sure. No, so, so these I, are I, listen. I wanted that. We all we all want for every player just because they're they're young men. We want to see them do well. But the thing is, it's a game of football, and there's going to be success and there's going to be failures, right? So they the, so it's going to happen at one point or another. I'll list a couple for you that uh, on defensive side that probably need to step up and 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 show. I think uh, I think Zion Logue and Warren Brinson in the middle because you know gone are the gone are the Jordan Davises gone are the Bear Alexanders. Now it's their time in the middle to to be okay. Who is who is the guy? There's no Devontae Wyatt there. All that they've kind of they've kind of uh, you know bided their time and they've they've been in there been in there. You know, working behind those guys now, it's their team. It's their time. Uh, no Jalen Carter there in front of them anymore. So now let's let's see how they respond on that. That's what I would say on there. Um, OU Herschel Walker has one for TK and one for Noshan. TK, who was the best opposing DB you faced while at Georgia, and who who on your team was the toughest to go against when you're at Georgia too? Man, I mean, we went up against some dogs day in and day out, uh, <laughs> like. And uh, uh, let's see, Boykin obviously. Um, okay. He was he was he was really good. What about P Mill and all them. P Mill, yeah, okay. I was there with P Mill. P Mill was good. He was pretty. He was he was pretty handsy. But I would probably say, I mean, during my time there, like one on one, I'm trying to think who gave me the most fish. Probably B. Me and B. Me and Boykin went at it every day. Um, so I would say another team. And then other In team, college. man, we played some whew, this. I got one for y'all. This is crazy. Man, we went out to Colorado. <laughs> yeah. Listen to this shit. We went out to Colorado, bro. We lined up. I get out there, break the huddle first play. Get out there, Jimmy Smith. Jimmy yeah. Smith, Ravens. Yeah. Long, long corner. Man, I get out there, the first play was a running play. I was like, I'm about to run this man off, yo. I'm just going to run him off, you know. Huh? Oh, oh shit. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, was like, wait arms already I said, wait a minute, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah. Jimmy Smith, man. He was he yeah. was he was really he was really good, bro. Real physical, long. Um, had a had a really nice career with the Ravens as well. So yeah, I gotta give my man his credit, put them hands on me one time. Had to wake up real fast out there in, in Boulder. Absolutely. Uh, no, Sean, what opponent stadium was the toughest to play in? So when you were at Georgia. What what road stadium was the was the toughest for you guys? Hmm. I don't know, man. That's tough because I mean I never looked at no game at the oh, it's gonna be a tough one. Uh, well, I mean, just what environment was maybe the toughest to, no, to play no, in? Man, I'm sorry. Uh, environment. I mean, you asking the wrong person. Man. <laughs> the yeah, environment that, doesn't play an effect on how you go out there. You just blacked out, huh? You just you just said it don't matter. That's actually what happens, you know what I mean? It's almost like every no one's even in the stadium anymore. You know, I mean you don't hear the noise anymore. You're so clear the mechanism for the love of the game. Yeah, you're so 
you're so focused on what's going on and the calls and who's coming. I got to pick up this linebacker. Um, it's just so much going on that I can't say that there was a place where I was like, man, this place is rock. That's why I always wanted to play at Florida because, like, this, the stands are right here. So I'm like, that got to be kind of annoying. I can't go sit on the bench because I was a guy that go sit on the bench and just collect my thoughts and chill. But now I got to stand up because the fans are like right here in my ear. That would have been super interesting. I would have loved to see how I would have reacted to that because you know I would have been going off and I would I would have been on the bench like this. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. I'm about to go get another hundred on y'all. I'm about to go get another hundred. So my fault. And, 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 no, no, and there was hey. no one on the other team either that I can think about like where I was like, oh man, he's coming down. I thought the question was gonna be on our team. If I had to pick someone on the team, like what you said, uh TK, we had a lot of dogs in Georgia. But bruh, Rennie, little Rennie, little straw Rennie Kelly <laughs> coming down. I'm like, bruh, cut. Really, you right, man. Coming downhill like this. Right, man. Really, really was no joke. You know what I'm saying? But we had a lot of dogs, man. We had a lot of dogs. Uh, Rennie Kern, but he 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 brought it. Now he brought it when he was when he was hitting too. Uh, I mean, com- compact and uh, you know, it, they say dynamite comes in small packages, man. That man was compact, but he was he was laying the wood now for right. sure. Uh, um, all right, so let's see. But we had a lot of tough games, Blaine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I almost, no I almost said that that Georgia Tech game too because we were going back and forth with Georgia Tech. Uh, yeah, Georgia, Georgia Tech was a little different animal back then. It was it a it, it was that that rivalry had a whole lot more juice to it than exactly. it, than it than it does now. Um, so ASU dog says best recruiting story about a school that tried to finesse you into picking their school. So what what school tried to tried to lay it on you? You know, try to try to do a little something to to get you to come there. That, but you still ended up going to Georgia. Uh, man, like I don't know. I can't think of anything like crazy finesse wise or anything. I'm uh, Urban Meyer came to the school. Uh, man, brought his like rings and stuff. Like this was when Florida was out there winning. Uh, brought his rings, <laughs> winning. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't doing that shit. I ain't doing that shit no more, y'all. Uh, but no, brought his rings, bro. Like, had me put them on, like stuff. I don't know, just nothing crazy. I don't think I can't think of anything like too crazy. Sauce, you might have a, a better story. Uh, that's good. I, ain't. I don't necessarily have one. Um, I mean, I would say maybe something like Rutgers. Um, you know, they they recruited me early. Yeah. Rutgers wasn't yeah. bad back then either. They were. Who was the running back they had? They had it, Rice. Something. Was something Rice? No. Who was, who was it? it? Yep. Did Ray Rice go there? Was it Ray Rice? <laughs> I'm about to look it up. I don't remember. Well, man, it was. It was someone. No, it wasn't Ray Rice. It had yeah, to Ray Rice did go to Rutgers. Was it Ray? I, I remember yeah, he, that. He was drafted in 2000, or he was drafted. He was. He, he was seventh in Heisman voting in 2006. See, that's what I'm saying. They had Ray, I guess, okay. Then they had another guy that was from Jersey um, over there as well. And their facilities was dope. They were inviting us up, you know what I'm saying? And, oh, man, I like these facilities. Cool. But I just, like, I played at Rutgers in, like, one of our national championships um, at, in high school, um, at state championships. And I was like, eh, I can't come here. I can't come here. Is it Newark? Is Newark? Where is that? Staten Island. It's in the island. Oh, is it? Staten Island. I don't know where that's at. I'm not mistaken. What was up there, Illinois? But yeah, right. man, uh, no one really. And I only went to, I only took three official visits too, so it wasn't like. Well, I got a recruiting story for you that that's going to bring back some memories for you. A different Ooh. guy for you, no, Sean, but it's going, but it's a different guy, but it's still uh, you're going to appreciate this. So. Uh, Michael Uini is a guy who just signed with Georgia. He's six foot eight, three hundred twenty, or just committed to Georgia. Six foot eight, three hundred twenty-five pound lineman from Texas. So I'm interviewing him, and he's telling, I'm like, "Hey, what? How'd it go on the visit? All this kind of stuff." He's like, "Good. They took get, the guys took me out. All this kind of stuff." He said, "While I was going, while I was going out with the guys, my mom was sitting uh, sitting back in the facility waiting on me to get back, and she was playing spades with Coach Bobo." 
<laughs> so and I said, I said, who won? He said, Oh, Coach Bobo killed her. <laughs> so, oh, so Coach Bobo didn't he wasn't he wasn't trying to take it easy on uh, Michael Eni's mom to try to, you know, butter her up to help uh, help help get it get hey. their son to, to Georgia. He just said, I'm just going in and, and whooping on the lady right there in spades. Oh, listen, they never took any prisoners, you know what I mean? Coach Bobo, you know what I mean? Mark, um, Coach Smart, um, uh, Coach Gardner. Uh, they ain't take no prisoners, man. They gonna try to lay it on you. But put it this way, they be cheating. They be cheating. I'm talking about talking across the board. I know they're giving each other signals. Uh, hey, I want my rematch too, Kirby. Ah! Yeah, All right, there you go. Right. There you go. Kirby, Kirby and Noshan. Hey, we'll air it. We'll air it right here. Spades yeah. for charity. Something like that. Let's, right. let's yeah. do it. That would be good. That would be good. All yeah. right. So, Sauce All On Me. He says, kind of non-dog, but this Denver Broncos fan wants to know if TK and KM think that Sean Payton can fix the Broncos. Mm, yeah. I, I mean, I do. I mean, you, you out there. So, so, I mean, you, you cover the team as well, so you could probably speak on it a little more. But I th- I definitely think Sean Payton's a great coach. I think that was a really good hire. Uh, somebody with a lot of experience, somebody that's, that's uh, you know, turned an organization around. If you saw what he did with the Saints from when he got there to, you know, uh, the longevity of his time there. Um, definitely think that's a, that's a good coach, as well as um, you pair him with a, with a quarterback like, like Russell. Um, yes, get, get Russ, get, get Russ back cooking. Oh, uh, don't do it. And they get Russ just to act normal, like a normal human being is the biggest <laughs> part. Like, not like a dang robot. What, bro? He don't be don't cooking, know. bro? Nah, nah. He's, uh, da- he's dangerous, Russ. Oh, uh, stop it. Listen, let's bro. ride. I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> We've had, had too much of that. We've had too much of that. Here in Denver, you know, what I mean, now we're saying, Hey, let's produce no more, yeah. let's ride, let's produce. I mean, because, yeah. yeah, I agree with you, TK. Um, Sean Payne's a great coach, you know, and he's bringing um, that tradition, he's bringing that mentality here to the Broncos that I think the team needs, and he's bringing culture um, that this team needs. It's been too many years where um, <laughs> this team's fall, fallen well short of where they should be, you know. Um, so, you know, having a coach like that is going to be, you know, great. But I think at the same time, yeah. at the same – what Tim Collins said. He said, Sean's going to rock their world. I wish Hard Knocks was in Denver this oh, year. I would love that, man. But he – shoot, he has – he it's a tight ship over there with Sean Payton. Man. He, he ain't even letting media talk about what's going on right now. Yeah. It's like huh. he locking the doors on him. So – you you had you ever had a new coach in the league? Like, that's it. Yeah. The worst. Yeah. So it's like going back yeah. to college. That's, I'm like, son. Why are we acting like this? Why y'all y'all acting totally different? Yo. Oh, yeah. Everyone's, <laughs> everyone's starting to act a little different, bro. Y'all acting totally different out here, B. Yeah. We're doing a, a whole bunch of unnecessary stuff. B. Yeah. And, but at the same time, man, I, think, I think Sean Payne needs time, though. I mean, I don't think this next season he's going to turn them around like what, you know, some people are saying. Uh, excuse me. But they only won a couple games last year. So, I mean, I don't see them winning any more than seven to eight this year. Um, it's going to take time. Um, you got to get the players back right. Um, at least the wide receiver room is looking back healthy. Running back room ain't looking too healthy. But at the same time, uh, we'll see what happens. Shout out my boy Jalen Verge. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Jalen is a good player as well. So, But it's, it all starts with Russ. I mean, we always talk about the quarterbacks. We talk about Carson Beck and how we're going to need to see him step up, right? I mean, we only can go as far as the quarterback can really take us in the defense. So um, last year – for the Broncos, they had a defense, and it was the offensive side that was struggling. So let's see if they can uh, if they can change that. Well, good stuff. Back to Georgia talk now for for TK and No Sean. Who were the biggest trash talkers y'all faced uh, yearly since it was many of the same teams and rosters? Was there anybody that you went against a couple times that you know you knew was just going to be talking that junk? Hmm. Uh, man, I feel like. <laughs> South Carolina, uh, I remember going back and forth with like Akeem August uh, a little bit. Um, I feel like, uh, no, yeah, nothing. Uh, who? Maybe some. No, Sean didn't. Maybe no, Sean didn't stay on the ground long enough. 
Yeah, maybe some cats from Georgia Tech. I don't know. I don't, nobody ever really talked. Talk, man. Ain't nobody ever really talked. I was running by. Uh, <laughs> I was, yeah. They was about to get ran by. So and that's yeah. you didn't you didn't I mean, stick around long though. No. You got tackled. You hopped right back up and run to the huddle. Yeah, I was gone already. Um, so I didn't get I didn't get too much try. So you get your you talking here and there. Um, I know that Florida game. It was going to be a lot of talking. There was a lot of talking. And at the same point, I mean, I only played two years, so I didn't get like a whole four year of like, oh, it's the same dude or this team always talking. Like I didn't know much my first year. Probably didn't hear much my first time. My first year playing my sophomore year. Then my junior year, it was like. They knew what they were getting in. They was like, all right. So Florida was the one talking because they were so pissed off about the, the, the year <laughs> earlier. So, yeah, I didn't have much of it. One of my favorite no Sean Marino clips is <laughs> Florida game, uh, I guess, 07. I wasn't there. But you, you, you – it's a moment in, the, in that game. Like, you get tackled, and this dude – I've asked you this, but I want you to tell the story. This dude, like, grab you, and, like, you turn around, like – Yo, what the? And y'all, y'all like smack hands. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but I think I guess you knew him or whatever. But that that it, I was like, yo, that was like just a weird moment. That was so cool. Yeah, that was a, actually a really cool moment because um, I forget exactly who it was right now. It's slipping my mind on who the uh, safety was, but um, I was chilling him on my official visit to Georgia, and I mean to uh, to Florida, excuse me, and uh, him and the fullback. And, uh, bro, we hit, we hit it off, bro. It was cool. He was cool people, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, bro, if I come here, you know what I mean? You know, da 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 da, da. Really cool people. So, um, in the game, you know what I mean? We, shoot, I ain't never, we ain't never played against each other, so you know what I'm saying? So, just having so like, he came full speed. I was like, oh, God, we trying to, we trying to go ahead with it. Bum, we both, I don't know if he's, he must have said something, but nothing slick. But it was more like, oh, let's get it, something like that. And I was like, hey, and I saw the, the way you turned around, though. I, it's Bruh. like it's like ingrained in my head. I'm like, yeah, I, I was, I, I was watching. I was like, because I didn't know it was him, so I turned around like, yo, who, who said that? And I saw, so I was like, oh yeah, let's get it. And then we both, and that was, yo, it was we, fire. I was like, <laughs> that was a we both on the same page. Like, all right, let's hey, oh, dope that's ass good stuff. Yeah. That's great. That's, I mean, it, little stuff like that is what people don't even realize what goes on in, in you know, in between plays and stuff. So that's that's great uh, to hear that kind of stuff. Last mailbag question, then we got our quarterback rankings. Mad Dog 2020, to both of you, how hard is it to catch Stafford's passes when he really gets into a throw and spins it? Uh, also, do you have any funny stories of Stafford, you know, hitting people in face masks, chest, breaking fingers? But I know you didn't catch – but hit me in the face. My first, yeah. like, my first damn uh, summer practice, bro. I, I'm running a slant, but you gotta get the head around. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, man. That thing's like, I was like, oh shit, son. <laughs> yo, yo. But nah, yeah. Uh, him and Murray. Murray dislocated my pinky. All kind of stuff. Often. Uh, thumbs. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Yeah. No, Sean, do you ever see do you ever see before like <laughs> even put him one in somebody's chest or something? Oh, for sure. Stafford was always doing that. I mean, we had a lot of quarterbacks that really do it, but Stafford had that zip zip for show. And it was such a pretty ball. You know what I mean? So pretty, nice and tight, and just I'm like, bro, you better stop playing. I mean, I saw Stafford on one knee throw 70. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, this boy is throwing that thing. So hey, yeah. uh, a lot hey. of those instances. Side tangent, you just talking about throwing on one knee. I'm gonna yeah. tell y'all, I'm gonna tell y'all who we we at Florida in 2010, maybe 2010. Nick Marshall is out yeah. there, he was the DB for us, out there launching it like launching. I'm like, yo, what in the hell? And then, mind you, Nick Marshall go to Auburn, Auburn, play, yep. play quarterback. But, bro, you talking about somebody that can slam. <laughs> The football, <laughs> bro. I was like, "Yo, this that's crazy." But yeah, right. staff can throw that too. Yeah, yeah, Nick Marshall had a strong arm for sure. Now, guys, it is time we've handed the mail back. We appreciate everybody submitting questions. That's fun. It we'll we'll do that more often because I know these guys enjoy just getting getting kind of teed up for some questions and things like that. So it's always fun to do. Appreciate you guys uh, providing your insight on all that stuff there. But like I said, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, guys. We are also looking to partner with people. 
who are Georgia fans because we talk about Georgia football. So if you want Georgia fans to uh, know about your business, this is the place to advertise on. So if you want to partner with Georgia Players Section, you can find me. You see my Twitter at bgilmer18. You can you can hit me up. Uh, my email uh, is just my name, blaine.gilmer at gmail.com. So hit hit me up, and uh, we'll we'll be glad. I know to one. Of, I know one of y'all got a business. I know absolutely. It. <laughs> I know to, it. We would love to to partner with you. You know, it's always good for Georgia fan businesses to help Georgia fans and Georgia fans to support those businesses. So that's what we'd like to like to do here on the show. So if you want to uh, advertise with us, uh, let let us know. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and switch over views here to get our quarterback rankings up. Uh, and and mind you, part of this comes into it, guys, mm-hmm. is. Uh, you know, are, are you about to add a rule out of nowhere? He is. No, I'm not adding I'm, a rule. I'm, so confused. I'm not adding a rule. I'm just going to remind you that part of being a quarterback, the biggest part of being a quarterback, is you play to win the game. Oh, you don't play to just play it. So I mean, you gotta have some winners. You gotta have some. What was it that Singletary said that time? He's <laughs> not a win- not a winner. Can't win with him. Can't do it. <laughs> so, so you got to think about that a little bit, or at least that's what I was thinking about when I did my rankings a little yes, bit. And I, I want to see what you guys thought. So we'll start off with our man, No Sean. Uh, oh, yeah. He was, the first, he was the first one to, to send a response back at our uh, in our group. So here you go, No Sean. Oh, and No Sean, No Sean and TK, mind you, they're out here playing uh, head coach. They are go ahead and naming starters for people. People ain't even got starters named. They go ahead and naming them, like Alabama, uh, Auburn, different places like that. So, no, Sean, uh, talk us through your rankings right here. Well, damn, I mean, it's a lot there. I mean, you see it. I mean, <laughs> I didn't think we were going to talk about it We got it like people this. listening on podcasts, right, man. man. We got people man, listening man. on podcasts, <laughs> man. Just on YouTube. <laughs> Hey, yeah, was, right. well, Jay, man, well, I, I put a lot of things, a lot, I put a lot of factors in mind. Yes, winning, but at the same time, I'm, I'd like to see um, what you put out there, your stats, and what you put out there, your production wise. Um, coach, I mean, a lot of things went to play when I made this list, okay? And it's a beautiful list. Of course, you start with Jaden. You see what he d- does and what, what he did last year. I'm excited to see what he can do in year two. Uh, underneath Brian Kelly. Um, I mean, the guy had a great year. Um, he better come come back next year and do what he can. I mean, 12, what, 12 TDs, only three picks. I love the three picks. You know, I mean, that means a lot. I know, I know he did a lot on the, on the ground, but I love what he did in the air as well. KJ, same thing. He was injured a lot, but for what he did out there, for a lot of the games that they were in, he put up some numbers. Experience. Okay. And experience. I don't want to go through I can go through every single one of those one by one, but I mean I like the way that he played for the time that he was out there. Will Rogers, listen, you can't talk about enough about especially his stats. And I keep on going back to him. I'm gonna love to see what he does this year. You know what I mean? In this pro style offense. You know, what I mean I don't care that they were all spread out. He was throwing it a hundred times, okay, Blaine? Experience again. And being able to see, I'll stop there. What, what do you want to say about the time? I'm questioning what in the world are you? I know, I listen, I know certain things are legal out there in Colorado, but what in the heck are you smoking putting Devin Leary at 11? Like, oh, what is man. going on? We can you get cannot there. put hashtag the do truth you, over there at 11. Do you want you want me to talk about him right now? Okay, I'll talk about him right now. First of all, okay, I don't care what you did over there at NC State. All right, I don't care. Yes, he had a good year, not last year, the year before, when he was out there. Still, different conference. And for the time that he was out there last year before getting hurt, his numbers were super impressive going into six, seven games. He looked okay. So, therefore, until he proves it in the SEC, and that's another thing. Yeah, he has a decent ball. Yeah, he has a good ball. But he can't deal with his legs. And in this league, you're going to have to be able to do something with them legs. So we just got more talent it. around him, in my opinion. Then that, that's a factor you got to put in here, too. Uh, I don't know about all that. He still has to prove it to me in this league. You know what I'm saying? That's why I put him down there. And I know where you put him. But I couldn't. I, I, going through the people, even that's like the Joe Andy, Milton. That's what Andy, like, says that Andy says. Is this Darty we're going to start? I, we don't know. But he feels like I'm he going is. going off from what <laughs> happened last year. I, at least I can't look into the future, can I? I don't yeah. know how the coaches are doing you know what I mean? Yeah. I know no, what they did last year, and I know what 
uh, Jackson Dart did last year. And he had a really decent season. Bringing that, I mean, it wasn't a great ending of the season, but yeah. I think that they had they had a really good season. I mean, players made plays, and he was one of those players that made plays. I had to put him up there. His numbers aren't even bad. Almost 3,000 yards passing. And Let me ask you his something. Legs. Let me ask you something. Is there any is there anything you want to go ten toes down on on this list? Is there anything you want me to hit that button for real quick before we go to TK? Is there anything you want to you just want to lay it on the line and say this is this is what I think about one of these guys? Nah. Anybody that you think is going to climb up the list by the t- this is preseason, remember? Oh, this isn't how we think they're going to finish. This is how they we got them going into the year. This is how I got them going in. I mean. Bro, a lot of these people got to prove it. Like, you, really, if you think about the top five people, I mean, the top five yeah, has been there and done it, and they had a whole season underneath their belt. I mean, if you look at Joe Mill, and you look at the Carson Beck, you look at the Connors, all these guys, uh, Leary, Ashford, all of them right there have stuff that they need to prove. You know what I mean? They haven't gotten the, the reps and the numbers yet to, see, to say that they're above where they are. I mean, the only person that you could really talk about is like a Brady Cook and a, a, a Brady Cook and an AJ Swan because they had a whole season, but I can't really put them above these other guys, you know? So it's like a lot of those guys has proved it to me. You, this is your team now. So what can you do? What have you done for me lately? Kind of list. And the other guys, you know, the top, the other like one through five are guys that had really, really good seasons that I need them to improve on and don't take any steps back. That's why, that's there it goes. There is no Sean Marino's 2023 SEC preseason quarterback rankings. I'll read them out for people on the podcast version. He had Jaden Daniels at one, KJ Jefferson two, Will Rogers three, Jackson Dart at four. Mind you, we don't know if he's going to start here or not, but mm-hmm. no Sean thinks he's got confidence there. Spencer, he had Spencer Rattler, uh, Joe Milton at six, Brady Cook at seven, Carson Beck at eight. Connor Wigman at 9, A.J. Swan at 10, Devin Leary, the truth, at 11, Robbie Ashford at 12, another competition there, Jalen Milrow, another competition for Alabama at 13, and Graham Mertz at 14. So there are some unknowns out here while we're trying to do this as of July 5th. I love the list. TK, here is your list, sir. Go Ah, ahead and uh, give us your thoughts. Jane Daniels at 1. May we? For me. (laughs) Um, y'all were same top four, top four the same. Yeah, for me, KJ, I love KJ. Y'all know I, I'm a I'm a big KJ fan. Was hurt was hurt last year, banged up. But I think you said it. You alluded to it earlier. His experience um, just carries um, that football team. And when when he's healthy, playing um, and playing at a high level, and when he's just healthy, I think that team is just ha- they have a chance. So I um, I think that he's a really good quarterback. I think he'll be a good quarterback on at the next level as well. Will Rogers. Um, no, Sean, you said it. I feel like he's, he sees so much. Um, he's seen so much football um, from a defensive standpoint um, with the air raid and what Mike Leach was doing. I, I think that he probably has I'm, – I'm intrigued, too, to see how he plays in a pro-style offense. But I think yeah. that from a cerebral standpoint, I think that his, he, his mind is probably really good. Like He probably can not see um, the field really well. Um, and then that, and that'll be, I think that'll be a lot more evident this year in yeah. a pro style, in a pro style offense. Um, <clears throat> Jackson Dart, I put Jackson Dart as well because, um, we've seen him, uh, we've seen him play and I, and I don't think that, I don't think Lane's Lane's going to go away from him. I, I really, I, I, for some reason, I don't think Lane will go away from him. Uh, and I, and I like Jackson Dart. He's got a lot of, lot, lot of talent, a lot of arm talent at five, my man. The Rocket. Crazy Joe Milton. <laughs> the Slinger. <laughs> the Slinger. Joe Milton. Um, I, I think in that offense, in that in that offense, they run a lot of verticals. Um, you got a lot of people running butt neck bucky nakeds. <laughs> <laughs> bucky nakeds wide open down the field. Um, so I, all he's gotta do is just um do what he does and, and launch it up out, up out of there. So I think that he'll have a good year. Spencer Rattler is another cat at six for me because I think that he has big arm talent. I think that he has – he might he might be the most talented guy on, on, on the list. Um, Especially how he, he – he, 
he finished last season except for right. last game, but then right. yeah. yeah, yeah. And he still had a good game. True. True, true. But, yeah. but, but 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 no, you got he, he might be the most talented guy on the list. Um, but you just so roller coastery, just up mm-hmm. and down. You just never know what you're gonna get. But I think he's a coach either, too. He's a roller coaster too. And that and, and you know, that might be part of it, bro. That mm-hmm. might be, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, co- coach and quarterback go hand in hand mm-hmm. to me. So that might be part of it. So they, they might have to grow together. Um mm-hmm. uh, at seven, I got our man Carson Beck. Guys, if we gonna thrive, it's gonna be because of this kid. I think that he will. Um, I mean, climb I love up him. The I, list. Yeah, I think that he will climb up the list. Um, and 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 a lot of that may do be due to what's around him. Um, yeah, you know, he's 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 not gonna have to do a lot. I don't feel like he's he's gonna have to put it in. Yeah, guys' hands like Adam, Barara, and let him run. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so it'll 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 be kind of like an AJ McCarron um, style. And you kind of saw that in some of his games when he got in there. It's just like, bro, just give it to him right here. I mean, yeah. you saw yeah. that in the numbers. I mean, he only and that's not an insult on AJ no. McCarron. No, no, no. I, AJ, AJ McCarron a, was yeah. a dog. Like he was a yeah. dog. But, he, but he, around what was around what was around yeah. what was around AJ McCarron? He was overshadowed. A hundred percent. Yeah, he didn't have to do extravagant things but could yeah he he damn he did extravagant things but he, he just had ink ink turn around get that bit yeah we I'll tell you what though, can Carson Beck get as creative you know I mean back there when things break down that's what I can't wait to see because I mean yeah they're gonna call the right plays but at the same time as the years go on creative is who who I don't even want to keep yeah. on going I mean, I'm just, you got to get creative as a he quarterback back right there is what I'm saying. You know? He loves so, it when you do it. He loves I don't know. It. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, uh, see, now you got me all messed up because I don't remember what I was going with that. <laughs> over there. But, uh, I, I need to see that from him. I need to see him get creative with things because, I mean, as the season goes on, the defense and the other teams are going to know your keys. You're going to know how, uh, how you're coming out. and You're going to know your plays pretty much. And can you get creative with it and, and, and get to that maybe that third, fourth receiver? Down the field, so we'll see. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. I no, 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 I love this. I love that. Uh Devin Leary at eight. Um, and that's totally, totally based oh, for on what? Blaine's hype. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Completely. You guys do not <laughs> know what is brewing up there in Lexington. I'm telling you, this hey. man is about to. Capture the league by storm. Over there, I Listen, I put I put him at eight, Brain. I put him at eight. I gave him the snowman because <laughs> go ahead and finish up so I can get my list up here. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably at one on yours. This shit's crazy. We gonna we gonna tap the shit out yours too. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I put him at eight, man. I I think uh obviously his lines got to be better. They were shit for uh, Will Levis last year. Um, but the line's got to be better. I think what's around him is very special out wide. So, yeah, eight's good for him. Nine, your boy Brady Cook um, out there. Sauce, so he's got some weapons out there. Ten, I went Connor Wegman. He got, he's got he got some pieces around him as well as he's got a new coach. Bobby Petrino, I think, is going to help him out a lot since our man uh, Jimbo can't do shit. Uh, Eleven, A.J. Swan. Um, yeah, yeah, whatever. 12, Jalen Milrow. And then the rest of them. Yeah, right. yeah then, then the rest of them, you know. Jalen Milrow or whoever they got over there. I was, I golfed with a dude today. I was like, bro, who the, who playing quarterback for y'all? He was like, I don't know, bro. <laughs> so I was like, shit, no, nobody know. No, so, nah, they don't know. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, I don't know. It they, seems they, to be they a, got the most work on that team right now. It's so been a while since – it's been a while since you've really had to wonder, how is Alabama going to be a quarterback this yeah, year? Yeah. You know? That, even like people can't answer that, and that's crazy. That's crazy. But I like it, how it, our list, though, too. I mean, we ain't far off a lot of them, you know. What I'm well, saying? I mean, I could, we can you, understand, but 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 but, you, but but put your glasses on. we about to, oh, yeah, you're about to on. see one that's a little bit different. Uh, I so here, so. <laughs> here is my list. Uh, I got Jaden Daniels at one. I agree with you. I think with all the experience that he gained last year, he going from year one to year two in the system, but number two is Devin Leary. Devin Leary is is, is going to be by the don't uh, hit, I mean, it, she don't want that she don't want that two footed bad boy she don't want that dose zapatos animal you know what I'm saying 
Devin Leary with those receivers over at Kentucky is going to work himself into being one of the top, definitely one of the top three quarterbacks in the SEC. And I think he'll end up being a high third, low second round draft pick. He's not going to go, he's not going to fall down into round like four or five. This man is going to have a great year and he's going to uh, really position himself well for the NFL draft. That is my dose of Pato's prediction on Devin Leary. Got to put it down right there. It is. Uh, it is <laughs> hey, Devin put that Leary. up there, Tim. He ain't. He got he's drinking what I'm drinking. He ain't because now, what are you saying, Blaine? Devin Leary, Devin Leary at Kentucky. Y'all don't realize how good that man was at NC State before he oh, before he got hurt. No, I'm just telling you. Oh, we saw, we saw, he was getting hyped Blaine. as a first round draft pick. Like that is that is how so now I'm even I'm being conservative a little bit and dropping it down and saying he's gonna be a, a low second, high high third with you know come because he's got Liam Cohen there that's going to be back in the in the fold there calling plays for Kentucky. Listen, Liam Cohen is the only reason that Will Levis was even considered into the first round is because he made him look like a first round guy in the in the 2021 season. And Wandell Robinson, who's with the Jets, TK, he did great things with Wandell Robinson when he was there, or with or with the nice. Giants, oh, yeah, with yeah, the yeah. Giants. So he did great things when uh, when he had Wandell there. So he's going to do that same stuff with uh, Tavion Robinson. He's going to do the same thing with Dane Key. Same thing with Barry and oh, Brown. So boy. I think Devin Leary's going to have a huge year. I like KJ Jefferson a lot. Listen, the that reason that – hey, hey, he hey, he's talking about you out there smoking. <laughs> Blame. Somebody, somebody called me off. Quarterback. I can't wait. Okay, top three quarterback in the SEC this year. All right. No doubt. And, no and doubt. Or, or early third. Okay. Hey, Listen, hey, hey. I'm gonna jump ahead. That boy got Connor Wegman at five. Yeah. Bro. Well, the, here's the thing about Connor Wegman. Okay. Connor Wegman did nothing but come in once he became the starter for Texas A&M. He inserted life into that offense, and that was with that old West Coast outdated system that Jimbo Fisher was running. Now with Bobby Petrino there, and he's got Mo Baby Moose over there, Moose Muhammad. He's got Evan Stewart to throw to. He's got Anaya Smith coming back. Uh, they've got stuff for guys returning on the offensive line, I think. And he did not turn the ball over last year. He yeah. he came in, he came in and did not turn the ball over one time as the quarterback for Texas oh, A&M. Oh, I man. like him. I like him a lot. Hey. Joe Milton. I, Joe Milton. I just can't trust him enough to put him up in the top five because every year that he's entered the year being a starter, he's lost a job. I think that happens again this year. Connor had um, a fifty-five percent completion rate too, though. He threw all those damn passes. It, it wasn't looking that pretty. All right, guys. Yeah, Car Carson Beck. I think he'll. I think he'll fly up this list because he's going to have so many weapons up there. Um, Ole Miss Ooh, in who's Alabama. Flying up? Who's flying up? Sorry. I think Carson Beck will end up flying up this list before it's all over with just because of the production. I mean, he's going to have so many weapons. Ole Miss and Alabama, who knows what, who the quarterback's going to be, so I can't really Trouble. evaluate. But, but then you got them at 10. eight and nine, no matter who they pick. You like them. Yeah. I don't care who the, I'm just saying just that's based on – so here's why I've got them uh, based in there. I think just because of Lane Kiffin's – Play calling alone is good enough, even if it's a guy who in, isn't a great quarterback and they got Quinshaw Junkins, I think he could be good and they could rise up. But I can't justify putting them any higher than that when I don't know who it is. And then same thing with Alabama. I don't know about Tommy Reese. I don't know about all that kind of stuff. Brady Cook is the guy who I think I may have put too low on this list because I got to looking at his numbers, no, Sean? He completed 65% and had 585 yards rushing last year. I mean, he's a good athlete. I think that, you know, Drink Drink is in a do-or-die type year. They got to perform over there if he's going to keep his job, in my opinion. So, I think Brady Cook could have a good they year. They just paid Drink. I had well, answer. that don't mean nothing. It don't, but hey. <laughs> that, that, that buyout ain't that big. It ain't a Jimbo buyout. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Seven. Okay. Spencer Spencer Rattler, I don't trust him. I just and I don't trust Beamer either. So, but you talk eleven. About you talk about numbers though. Eleven. Yeah. Spencer well, South Rattler Carolina. Numbers. South Carolina has two. Two. We're not talking about South Carolina, really. We're talking about Spencer no. You Rattler. are. You are because because South Carolina has two scholarship running backs on their team. They lost their left tackle in the spring game. To a knee injury. Listen, then he, that, he that doesn't means he, have any receiver. He better have numbers. Running. He's about to be thrown. Yeah. 
field. Yeah, but he's gonna be throwing to one guy, Juice Wells, the entire time, and that you know how that goes. I mean, man. you know what, man? He, he, put, with the pathos, bro. he put him at eleven. Pathos. Pathos. She don't want that. She don't want that two footed bad boy. She don't want that dose of pathos animal. You know what I'm saying? What is it, Nose John? Who do I want to pick here? You could say either one of these quarterbacks. I think Spencer Rattler will have a better season than Leary. Or it will be equal to. Equal to. I think you can put their numbers together next year and not that Spencer Rattler and Leary will have similar numbers. Put that down right now. They will have similar numbers. It won't be a blowout. He won't throw 500 yards more than Spencer Rattler. I think they will be even. Spencer yeah, Rattler Spencer Rattler's going to be throwing that thing because they're going to be behind all the time. Sure, whatever you have to say, but that's my thought those right there, Rattler. It's no, good. no. It, I, I hey, think, uh, I got to put some toes down. You over here talking some crazy. Let's do it. No, yeah, they hate that. I, I oh, like it. I like it. Y'all, they, listen, well, I don't know why y'all hating on Spencer Rattler. Bro. I, I don't know, know why either. Again, y'all ain't hear what I said. He's probably the most talented quarterback on, on that list. But there's also the intangible part of it, right, TK? Because let's be honest, in terms of pure talent on the field, was Stetson Bennett the most talented in the SEC last year? No, no but what did he do? I yeah. that. But yeah, and, and, he, and he made the guys around him better. That's a quality of a good quarterback. Yeah, Spencer that's a, Radler, that's a, that's a, I'm just saying he hadn't proven that he can do that yet. Okay. That's my opinion. I, 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 I would have to disagree with that. We you don't see. think I can't can... wait. Let's go, Spence. Hey, I might go to a game. I'm going to be on sideline with him. You hey. might. Yeah, you're going to go what to the is... Georgia-South Carolina game. <laughs> hey. That's y'all doing the soldier boy over there. <laughs> hey, the they're going to play each other this season. I can't wait for that game. I should have yeah, said the game three. Have, You know what? They'll have a – Season, I'll do season and game. I think he'll shine that game too. Wait, you're talking about head to head against Leary? Yeah, I like that too. Oh. What, what, what season, what, what week they play? Let's see that 2023 South Who Carolina here, football man. schedule. I'll, I'll tell you what, what week that is. I need to see that week. All right, that is November 18th. That's the end of the season. Uh, Kentucky, Kentucky's going to go down there to Columbia and lay the smack down on them. That's what they're going to do. Gonna What's the down. spread then? Give me yours then. What's the spread again? What you don't think they went by? Cool. Don't be looking uh, it up. Like, come on. No, I don't know what the spread is. I'm saying whatever the spread is, Kentucky, Kentucky's going to cover it, and they're going to win outright. All right, bro. Let's do it, man. I can't wait. You know what I'm saying? Let's, hey, I just had to get that out there, man. Go, go, set, so. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> Right. Over. I need to prove it, though. I can't wait to the season, man. It's a lot of talk. It's a lot of talk about him. Kentucky. Marco, Marco is, uh, Marco is Cox at left tackle. Going to solidify that offensive line. Kentucky's going to be the second-best team in the SEC, and they're going to be led by Devin Leary. So uh, the second-best second team in the SEC East. I was about to say, goodness. Yo, East. I was, listen, I was talking too fast. SEC East. Blame me. You always do this, though. You always. Talk All right, guys. About what do you got? What do you got for for everybody? Uh, but you know, what do you want to leave everybody with before we tune off here or sign off here? Anything? Anything oh, you got? Uh, got anything that that comes to mind that you want to tell tell the good people? I ain't even no blame. Got high, y'all. <laughs> I ain't even no. Hey, watch out for the. For the <laughs> I did not. Watch know. out for the backs over there at Tennessee, though. The backs over there at Tennessee. Didn't they just get another one running back over there? Yeah, listen, I listen. I, Tennessee can run the football. Uh, they can, they can run, they can run the football for sure. They got, they got good running backs. Arkansas's got good running backs. Uh, so they're, and that, no, Sean, that is a great segue. You see, he's learning this business here, TK, because that, that is what we call a segue into next week when we will be ranking the SEC running back. <laughs> so you, you join us. We're going to be doing that. We appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, and make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, tell your friends about us. We'll have the podcast version out tomorrow. So for my guys, TK and No Sean, I am Blaine Gilmer. We'll catch you all next week, 8.30, right here on Georgia Player Section on UGASports.com.
the best in this sport. Whether you like it or not, learn to love it because it's the best thing going today. Ooh.